Do you think machines will perceive the world as human one day? And if they do, what will be the benefit for us? Computer vision and deep learning technologies are advancing exponentially. Tata Consultancy Services, a global IT provider, is pioneering in these fields with talented specialists like Apolba Das. Hi. Do I pronounce well your name? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, perfect. So you are an expert in video analytics for TCS uh, in Bangalore, and it specializes in artificial intelligence. Um, and we can say that you are a pioneer in uh, deep learning. So you have published five books. You have filed 25 patents, which is amazing. Um, so today I'm very pleased to have you with us. So you will be able to explain us a little bit about this video analytics and artificial intelligence. Sure. Yeah. So, um, what is video analytics? Yeah. So, thanks, Cecil, for this interview primarily. So, uh, video analytics or image analytics, whatever you say, this is coming under the bigger umbrella of computer vision. So, computer vision is again uh, one specific way of doing artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence means broadly uh, providing intelligence to one machine. Call we are calling it as a as an intelligent machine. So how can one machine sense and react to the environment? So through all the five senses, like we have five senses, uh, machine can also have those five senses and definitely vision is the most important, most complex and most accurate sensor. So if we are donating not only the eyes, but also the vision system to the machine where the cameras are like our eyes and the processing unit is the, the brain, we call it as computer vision. So as I said, it is a branch of artificial intelligence and computer vision can be considered as image analytics when the input is still images, we are analyzing still images and video analytics when we are analyzing moving images or motion streams. So yeah, that's how it is. So how we sense the environment through vision, how a machine can sense the environment through vision. Like I'm recognizing you, you are Cecil. If one machine can recognize you through your photo, that's image analytics, or through one of your video, I'm understanding what action are you performing? You are walking, you are leaning, you are running. So only through one frame, I'll not be able to understand whether you are running or walking, but probably through video, I can. So what can you do with video analytics? Good question. So uh, being part of Tata Consultancy Services, actually I'm part of the IoT Innovation Lab. So video analytics is currently everywhere. So, so if you if you look at the fourth industrial revolution, I think you know this currently. This is the this is the industry 4.0 uh, age. So 1.0 is uh, the invention of steam engine. 2.0 is invention of electricity. 3.0 is invention of computer. And very soon, so between these two, it is it is a shorter period. 4.0 is actually uh, IoT or cyber physical system. So in IoT, whatever whatever vertical we talk about, it can be government ISS, it can be government vertical, like people are trying to look for suspects or criminals from a very large data set, that is image analytics or video analytics, they're trying to track some suspect or some, some terrorists in a crime scene, that is video analytics. We can talk about automotive, autonomous vehicle, so through LIDAR or radar or camera, we are trying to understand whether somebody is in front of the car and car is applying brake automatically. That is video analytics. You can talk about retail. We are doing customer behavior analytics. So we have done a lot of, lot of such projects with different customers. We have delivered a lot of solutions based on our own IP. We own uh, an IP called the TCS Image and Video Analytics Toolkit, which is TCS certified, IP, IP safe certified asset. It's owned by my team. Uh, so again, so for retail, so we are understanding whether there is some theft happening in the in the self checkout counters, whether uh, the the drive through customers are getting crispy French fries right on time cooking. We, we can talk about another vertical, maybe manufacturing, uh, where you are you are producing some machine parts, or maybe assembling some printer circuit boards. Is the assembling correct? So can camera see? in one shot and real time can it understand that this is correct this is incorrect this is the classification this is the degree of defect everything together uh, 
can we talk about manufacturing production plan where one drone is flying and automatically identifying different assets their defects and doing change detection with respect to its previous flight it's creating the complete 3d model of one few kilometers long uh, long plant or some manufacturing production plant so medical medical industry so you are swallowing on capsule for endoscopy it's carrying one camera and one transmitter it doesn't have any memory device it's going through your digestive tract and next day uh, early morning through the the natural process it is going out of your body and it travels on on 8 hour long path our digestive tract it is transmitting the images to the waste belt for doctors it is very difficult to analyze and understand where the bleed spot is from the entire digestive tract mm. uh, so can image analytics or video analytics go through all the frames automatically and and mark them tag them with my confidence measure that this is where i found some bleed spot and i'm 72% confident mm. so so whatever you say so i spoke about almost all the verticals we work with banking and finance so do you have any duplicate account in your bank bank so are you fraud star to face recognition so everywhere computer vision and video analytics wow thank you why the video analytics ai artificial intelligence is becoming more and more important suddenly okay i would say it's not sudden uh, it was there uh, but we had some problems what are the problems uh, Essentially, video data is huge. The size of video data or image data is really, really large. You can call it as big data. So, uh, and and the actions, the the scenarios are also getting very, very complicated. There are a lot of challenges in video analytics or computer vision, like environmental challenge. Suddenly, it starts raining, and I'll be not, I'll not be able to detect some object or recognize something so easily if it starts raining or suddenly the sunlight is behind me so i'll not be able to recognize that person if, if the light is exactly behind you i'll not be able to recognize you also so there are a lot of such challenges uh, for that we have to build lot of computationally complex algorithms and for which we need very good processing units number one number two the requirement of data so we didn't have that large amount of data also to to train our machine there is one um, subset of computer vision uh, artificial intelligence which is called as machine learning and subset of machine learning is deep learning i'm not going to the deeper of deep learning now uh, so what i'm trying to say is so that requires lot of data so machine learning is one subset of ai but it's very important subset it's not all but it is very important subset of ai so till till now we didn't have that kind of processing units and we didn't have that kind of large data now we have so that's why artificial intelligence or deep learning is so much celebrated why vision because number one vision is inconspicuous you don't have to see the camera but camera will see you say let me talk about just some authorization or authentication system probably you want to you want to access some some secure place uh you have to use biometric so if you want to use your fingerprint which is true biometry you have to cooperate with the system so you have to go and touch otherwise it will not capture you right but if you are using face recognition whereas face is actually not at not a pure biometry we call it as pseudo biometry Uh, why I'll, again? This, so again, deeper talk. I'll not go into that detail. So face recognition means I can just place one camera somewhere, and you don't have to cooperate with the camera. Still, I'll be able to recognize you and provide you access. And out of many other sensors, camera is much cheaper, so you can get very uh, cheap camera very soon. Maybe the processing is little expensive, but the cameras are not very expensive. Essentially. So there are many such reasons. So that's why computer vision is always celebrated uh, over and above all other sensors. Uh, for any other sensor, recognizing something—it can be human, it can be some object—is much more difficult. The processing is very, very difficult uh, through other sensors. You can even call about lidar, 3D lidar. Even that also cannot recognize you. It can detect it's a human being, it's a tree, but camera can easily tell that this is still this is a human. So can you tell us more about what is the user experience 
uh, research at this stage on video analytics? Sure, it's a, it's a very nice question. Mm. So I do a lot of due diligence uh, before we start any project. Generally, I, I visit that site where you want to deploy one computer vision or AI solution. I'll give you just one example to answer this question. So we have got some problem statement from one of our customer's customer. It's again retail. Our customer's customer is retail and our customer was a camera manufacturer. So as I told you, we already have one IP uh, called as Image and Video Analytics Toolkit, TCS Image and Video Analytics Toolkit, which is TCS asset now. So they called me and uh, they wanted me to visit one quick service restaurant because they got some information like for the drive through customer, the sales was getting impacted because of the quality of French fries. User research helped us. So user research told us that 70% of the drive through customers are ordering French fries. So we can tag one medium French fry basket to one car. And if it is bigger car, we can tag one large French fry. That's how we started and that user research helped us. Next, when we deployed the solution, we found something interesting and that triggered another problem statement. How is it? So we are seeing 10 cars and they are preparing the French fries because we said 10 cars are entering. 10 cars are in your drive through but when they should prepare how much French fry, we are not telling because 10 cars might be in the queue, it might be lunch hours, or 10 cars might be coming really fast. So, again, UX is coming to the picture. Uh, so, when they are designing the UX screen, they understood okay, so I can, it's not, in, or not only sufficient for me to count the cars, but also I have to understand where the car is from multiple camera tracking. So it's not only deep learning and object detection, it's not only detecting one car and, and telling this many cars are there, it's also understanding where the car is and at what speed the cars are moving towards the delivery counter. So that's how UX actually complemented uh, the solution. Uh, it actually emphasized the problem statement, it has improved the problem statement. And wow, that's a great example, thank you. Um, so, a poor book. Why are you so interested in video analytics? Okay, so personal video. question. <laughs> so, uh, very recently I met uh, my kindergarten friends and I came to know that uh, I was a very good painter when I was in school. I forgot that almost. Uh, so, this image and video is not only technology, it has some artistic viewpoint also. It has a lot of geometric uh, it's a lot of geometry, the mathematics, the patterns. Those are really, really creative and it resembles with painting to me. So when you look at some image, it is, uh, it is having some artistic viewpoint also. So probably that triggered. So it's not technical answer at all, but I don't mind. So mm -hmm. I feel that was that. I love signal processing. My, my uh, second book from Springer, that was signal conditioning. Uh, and analog or continuous web communication. So I love signal processing and image processing can be seen from two different perspectives. One is the signal processing perspective, another one is the pattern recognition perspective. So my latest book, uh, the name of the book is Guide to Signals and Patterns in Image Processing. So I've shown how similar problem in image processing, same problem in image processing can be solved in two different, completely two different perspectives. So that that is very, very interesting to me. So image can be considered as just some two dimensional matrix, some numbers. Image can be considered as some, some well-known patterns or repeated textures. Uh, image can be considered as some, you know, some defined, defined feature points, some, some, some defined uh, combination of features like, like my eyebrow, two, two eyebrows, two corners of leaves, some symmetric face, so this kind of stuff. So, Combination of those, so from artistic viewpoint, signal processing perspective, pattern recognition, probably it triggered me back to me. It may not be very conscious decision, but yeah, it just happened. Okay. And I'm still doing image processing, video analytics, computer vision since the last 16 and a half years. I've, I've not done anything else in my life. <laughs> wow. uh, at least in my professional career. Okay. Do you think that a machine with deep learning and camera capabilities will be able to perceive 
exactly like a human does? We are too far. Uh, it's an excellent question. It's a great question. And I have written a blog for TCS Public Domain recently, uh, not recently, probably last year on this. Can computer um, see the way human um, can? Uh, if you read the greatest book of uh, Darwin, Charles Darwin, The Origin of Species, when he was describing the human vision system, the evaluation of vision system, he well explained it, okay? So he started with uh, so the multi-organ vision, then then one uh, cavity kind of stuff, how the, the water is actually covering that, how the eye is being evolving. At the end, he himself is questioning it, the, the evaluation of eye through natural selection seems absurd in highest possible degree. He himself is challenging his own thought. Probably he is he is also acknowledging somebody is there like engineer or God. I don't know. So why is it so? Because he also felt, Darwin also felt that human vision system is not I, it's not only I. Human vision system is probably the most complex and most accurate sensory organ. We are still too, too far to reach there. I can give you an example. Why is it so difficult? Mm, how we see vision? Uh, David Marr from MIT, uh, he has written a book called As Vision, where he interviewed himself to understand how vision works. And he proved that our vision system is combination of eye uh, processing through primary visual cortex. In primary visual cortex, we have multiple layers and we're going into the detail. And psychology and physiology, even psychology is involved in our vision system. It's very interesting. And we have two pathways in our brain. One is dorsal, one is central. When you are crossing the road, first of all, your brain knows where the object is. It doesn't know what the object is. So dorsal says, that's where the object is. And, and at this particular time, probably the object might come here. But it doesn't say it's struck. It takes some time to process what it is. So imitating all those steps in machine will be really, really difficult. So people are saying deep learning can imitate a lot, but there are a lot of publications to say, how can you fool deep, deep learning? So there are a lot of networks. They are claiming that, that that machine can recognize some object better than human being. But there are other papers who are saying that I can manually create something some patterns with very high confidence, with more than 99% confidence, deep learning will say, uh, this is zebra or this is bus. Whereas you have created just some, some dots or some lines, it is not a bus. So both are there. So we are too far there. If you ask me how the machine should be designed, it should be multi-sensor number all, number one, because we take decision based on multiple sensors, not only vision. And number two, it should be closed loop system, which means there are two ways. I'm giving you an example of autonomous vehicle. If you are asking one car to follow the lane, okay, so lane keep assist. So you are telling the car there will be two lines and you should be always between these two lines. So one way of doing it is just showing, uh, asking computer vision to detect these lanes and telling the control system, the actuator, that, okay, these are the two lens and you be between these two. Another way of doing it is, you just don't think anything else. You just go and drive. The, the camera can see the lens and the camera can see what kind of actuation you're providing. It's exactly closed loop. You don't know what is happening in between. So probably we should take the second approach where you have the complete end-to-end -end input and end-to-end -end output and let the machine decide, let the software write software for you. So that's how probably it should be. So I think uh, for better understanding, uh, you might uh, go through that blog I spoke about. Uh, so that will give you even better idea. Thank you, Apurbo. Thank you, Cecil. See you. See you. How far are we from imitating the magnificent nature with technology? What is the role of human in this? Apurba has already clarified one of the area today and I thank him for that. Stay tuned for more tech interviews.